for those who have a loved one suffering from Alzheimer's disease. They may also have concerns for their future cognitive health. Children and grandchildren of patients may worry that as they age, they could be next. It's a huge concern because there is no cure for Alzheimer's. Amyloid plaques in the brain are the first sign of Alzheimer's disease. Plaques may slowly collect in the brain for two decades or more without causing cognitive problems. But if it were you, and there's a way to find out if you have Alzheimer's disease many years before symptoms occur, would you want to know? The whole concept of being able to identify disease at the earlier stages, like before symptoms are onset, has a lot of appeal because you could make an argument the same way that we manage cholesterol. You wanna to try to intervene in the disease process before an end result occurs that is not a good outcome. For instance, in the case of heart disease, if you can treat cholesterol to prevent a heart attack, that's better than treating cholesterol after, that, after there's been a heart attack. That's getting into the area of prevention. Dr. Joel Bronstein is the president and CEO of C2N Diagnostics in St. Louis. The company has an Alzheimer's blood test on the market for people over the age of 60 who are experiencing symptoms. The blood test is called Precivity AD. The test helps physicians determine the presence or absence of amyloid plaques in the brain. The blood samples are processed at C2N's lab. The test measures levels of the amyloid beta protein. Amyloid beta proteins clump together to form the sticky toxic plaque scattered throughout the brain in Alzheimer's. Amyloid plaque pathology is really the earliest indicator that something might be happening abnormal in the brain. You can even identify abnormal patterns of amyloid processing 15, 20 years before the onset of clinical symptoms in Alzheimer's disease. So the ability to actually measure these amyloid particles in the blood is a real innovation. Innovative because blood tests can be accessible and affordable. While the test is not approved for people who do not have Alzheimer's symptoms, the earliest possible identification and prevention are the next steps. That is a very active area of research in the field of Alzheimer's disease, but it is currently a research application. And there's a lot of studies that are required to make sure that now, if you're offering a test that can identify disease, let's say 10 years before the onset of symptoms, what are the implications of that to the patient? C2N Diagnostics is engaged in advancing studies and clinical trials for the prevention of the devastating symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. The earlier you intervene or the earlier you identify the presence of disease, the greater the impact you can have on preventing the downstream complications of the disease. There's good data to show effective lifestyle interventions have an impact on delaying progression of Alzheimer's disease. The same way that we think about modifying our risk factors for heart disease, we should be thinking the same thing about our brain health. And so when we think about those risk factors, it's uh, the, our diet, it's physical activity, it's sleep. So um, sleep deprivation is a significant risk factor for late stage Alzheimer's disease. So we want to kind of build upon that to really make that a um, strategy to help incentivize perhaps it's middle-aged individuals to live healthier, um, be very proactive with their health, get life affairs in order, change the way in which they're living, think about the best prevention strategies possible, and then also access clinical studies that are introducing and testing new drugs that will one day ultimately have an impact on the disease. The process takes in many considerations. We think about what are the you know, safety risks associated with offering a blood test for Alzheimer's disease. You, you, know, you really need to think about the um, psychological effects of you know, identifying the presence of disease what are the social implications? What are the implications about insurability? What are the implications about you know, working? And what does it mean to the family? So the infrastructure for supporting a broad scale screening strategy 
still needs to be developed. 